Hi everyone. Today we are going to look at the following problem that involves a so-called path integral. Now, this is the notation we use for a path integral. Here, in this particular example, f is just defined as this particular function. The ds uh, is, is known as the arc length element. And this curly c is a, a so-called helix in three-dimensional space. And this particular helix is parameterized by this vector function. Okay, so when we say parameterized, we mean described by. Okay. All right. So essentially, what we're doing here, we are integrating our given function f over the helix with this particular description, and we're integrating with respect to the arc length. So how do we do it? Well, essentially, what we're going to do is break this path integral down into something that we already know and, and recognize. Okay, so by definition, the path integral is just f evaluated along our parameterization multiplied by the magnitude of the derivative of our parameterization. We multiply these two things together and integrate them normally. Here the alpha and the beta are the upper and lower bounds on t. So here the alpha would be 0 and the beta would be 3 pi. All right. All right, so let's get this part first. F evaluated along our parameterization. So what we do is we go to our, our vector function C and substitute in cos t for x into F, sine t for y into F, and t for z in F. All right, so the first part's going to become cos squared t. The second part's going to become sine squared t. And the final part is just going to become t. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see some nice simplification and cancellation. Cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So we get a very simple function of t here. Let's work out this part. Well, to get the magnitude of c dash, first of all, we need to work out the derivative of c, right? So to do that, we differentiate each term with respect to t and write as a vector. Okay, I'm going to put everything together here, but hopefully it's clear what's going on. All right, so let's take the derivative of cos t with respect to t sine t with respect to t, and t with respect to t. Okay, so now what we do is we square each component, add all the components together, and um, take the square root. Okay, so Now again, you'll see that there's some nice simplification here. We end up with root 2. Now notice as a constant, in general, this is a function of t, not, not just a constant here. All right? So putting our two parts together, our beta is 3 pi, our alpha is 0. We obtain the following very simple integral. Okay, we can integrate that easily and um, we'll get some
something like this. Okay, so that's our answer, but what does it mean? Well, as far as applications go, if our f represents um, a, a density function, and this particular helix is a spring or a coil, then the, a path integral represents the total mass of the spring or coil. Okay, and in this particular case, the density function f would measure um, mass uh, per unit length. Okay, so that's, that, that, that's one particular application of path integrals. 